If you've been learning Go or if you've been writing Go, you probably have gone a few times where you've asked yourself, should I be returning a pointer? Should I not be? Is it okay if this is a copy of the value? Does my function need to accept a pointer? I don't really, when should I use which? And so that's what I want to talk about today. So I was stumbling upon Reddit in r slash Golang, kind of my nesting zone, if you will. And I came across a really cool post that says the following. Do you ever use pointers just for the sake of nil? I've seen this in previous jobs whereby a function will pass slash return a pointer just for the function somewhere can do if some var equals equals nil handle that logic instead of if some var equals equals some struct handle some logic personally i don't like this approach but it seems to be fairly prevalent amongst go code what are your thoughts on it you can see here one really good comment by i'm york sadly i do it all the time because i prefer accidentally dereferencing a nil which shows up as an immediate error to accidentally working with an uninitialized struct which could cause any kind of sound issues further down line if only someone somewhere had invented a good way to return errors which prevented this kind of mistake tagged union wikipedia link all of this is a pretty good topic to discuss about pros versus cons returning pointers i'm guilty about this too i actually just taught a course on front end masters about the differences of when to use a pointer as a return or not to use a pointer as a return so just to kind of brief uh summary you can pass values as go as copies or the or the actual reference to memory it depends on the use case but obviously you're passing a copy to a function if you make any modifications to that structure that you're passing it's not gonna it's only gonna exist in the realm of that function whereas if you need to make a permanent change or actually change the address the reference in the struct then you have to pass in the pointer that references the allocated memory of that definition or wherever that's holding the the memory of the data field in the struct but it's a pretty interesting kind of topic when figuring out when should you use which for when so i decided to make this little advanced board here of the pros in greed and the cons in red here of when returning pointers so the the first one I want to say is kind of funny efficiency and I'm putting here because if you have let's say a very complex struct with tons of fields if you're constantly passing the copy returning a pointer to an object instead of that copy can save memory and this is especially true for like I said large structs or objects in your go code if you're passing structs you know between functions or just across your application on the con side in that same topic is this could lead to memory leaks so what do I mean by this? So if you have a pointer that is indefinitely referencing some object or some piece of memory, you could run into memory leaks within your Go application. Now, I know the garbage collector does this. Go's garbage collector is very crucial for this. It probably saves a lot of people's keister. However, if you're not careful and you do not free up the memory of a pointer, then you could run into some issues, performance, or even leaks down the line. All right, another good point to add in the pros co column, and I've already mentioned this, is mutability so like i said if you're passing in the actual uh pointer of a struct with a bunch of different data fields if you make a modification you can mutate it unlike a copy where if you're passing in a copy of a struct and you make a modification and let's say you return the struct or whatever and you think that field has been updated and you reference it down your code you could run into some pretty nasty gotchas so just passing in a pointer to your struct allows you to mutate those fields in place and then you know, you're free to do whatever you want with that modified struct. But on the other side of that same argument, this con leads to safety concern. And what I mean by that, if you don't want to actually modify the field in the data, if you accidentally pass a pointer and you make a change that's mutable and you have actually modified the reference in that struct, then you have basically unsafely modified a field in your struct. So yeah, returning pointers can lead to unwanted modifications on the underlying data type if you're not careful. And this is especially true if the color isn't aware that what they're receiving or returning is a pointer. So uh, the big one, the one that sparks this whole video is a uh, return nil as a value. And this is extremely key, especially if you kind of couple it with like the zero value of an error, which is nil. So you can basically say that, you know, if your function call returns in nil, you can use it as an expectation upstream or downstream, wherever you kind of expect a return from a function that can either create a struct for you or, you know, do something else. Or, you know, even a better example, if your code handles an error, instead of returning you know struck like this along with your error you can just return nil and error which is a little bit nicer it makes the code a little bit easier to read i mean is it a big deal no because upstream whoever's calling this function it's only going to care about the error so it's like if error does not equal to nil however i do see kind of the convenience factor of having nil available for us to do any kind of you know comparison or just check if anything exists in that return alongside the error if you guys like go in this kind of 
content, make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy. But let's get back to the video. Okay, now I don't have one that's necessarily coupled against the returning nil as a, as a pro. However, I quickly Googled one other con with this because I couldn't really think of many. And there's actually something about concurrency. So basically, as it says, when sharing pointers across Go routines, you must ensure proper synchronization to avoid a race condition. This can complicate the design and implementation of concurrent systems. So I think what this means is if you're passing pointers into different Go routines and you make a modification to that struct in maybe different places, you may find yourself having race conditions or if you're making kind of any, you know, call on that struct that depends on the field to be modified on a previous synchronous or asynchronous flow, you may get this kind of race condition. So concurrency, I think that's kind of maybe a nit, but I think the race condition is definitely possible. It's definitely something I could see happening uh, with Go routine. And then last con I see is inconsistent AP API design. So what I mean by this is a lot of SDKs typically use one or the other. So typically in any kind of library that you use, they either expect uh, references or the return pointers. So it makes sense that if you are going to just use one, keep it consistent across your entire application. Make sure you kind of consider all these other cons we've talked about here, but don't kind of flop around the two. Don't make one function call in the same library. Expect a pointer or return a pointer while another one does not. That could just make a bad user experience. And I actually thought of another major one. This kind of goes under the safety nil pointer dereference. So this nil pointer dereference is talked about in this Reddit post. You can catch it right away. But if you have a method call on a field in your struct that just so happens to be nil, you're going to get a panic and that's going to pretty much crash your entire app. So that's another pretty nasty con again under safety that you should definitely consider when using or returning pointers in your application. I actually think this is the biggest con. I probably should have pointed it higher, but yeah, I mean, no point of dereference. This is a nasty one. A lot of people have been bit by this. The classic example is, um, you know, if you're passing data between a database and it's not there, or um, if you have like a non initialized map in Go and then you pass that down and then you call a method on it. Yeah, that, those are nasty. If you know what I'm talking about, leave me a comment below. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you think. All right, but that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. I found this Reddit post kind of interesting. So I just want to quickly share my thoughts on it. Let me know in the comment section below if you can think of any more pros and cons. Uh, I think this is a pretty decent list. Uh, let me know. Why do you use pointers? And uh, when do you choose to return a pointer or to not return a pointer? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. And as always, comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't. Come on, let's get to 25K. Love you guys. Make sure you give me that pow. Catch you later.